God, that you would just touch Sister Jane's request. God, you know the circumstances. You know the feelings. People, we, the people need you, God. We need you every time. We thank you for what you've done for us in the past. We thank you for what you're going to do for us in the future. And we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this service. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right, Brother John, we'll do this offering and, and get take up your tithes in the offering. And... Yeah, you can't get out of it that easy. Yeah. All right, Brother Dick, would you pray? Okay. Uh, Lord, we pray for you. Thank you this morning. Thank you that we can give to your word, Lord. And uh, may your word go forward, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Because he lives, I can face this
Now we're going to sing it again. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And there's a couple of spots in there. It's not just He is Lord. He is my. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just lift our hands this morning. And we sing that unto Jesus. He's my Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you believe it, sing it with all your heart. Amen. Amen. Lord, he is my
another song, and this one is just about things that I think about Jesus. And you see the words up there because he is so wonderful. Amen. And it's a little heavy, but it's not fast as if there's going to be a meeting, but that's all right. We'll get by. Well, wonderful Jesus is to me. You may be seated. Praise God. Isn't he wonderful? <clears throat> Praise God. I'm going to try to sing It's Different Now. <clears throat> I once was lost in sin. I had no peace within. To save my weary soul, I knew not how. But Jesus came to me, by grace he set me free. And it's different, oh, so different now. It's different now, since Jesus saved my soul. It's different now, since by blood I'm whole Oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me and it's different oh so different now went to church one day to hear them sing and pray the preacher firmly plowed the gospel plowed said you must repent so down the aisle I went and it's different oh so different now it's different now since Jesus saved my soul it's different now since by his blood I'm whole oh Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me, and it's different, oh, so different now. Since Jesus made things right, I praise him day and night. How he could change me so I knew not how. I praise the Lord, it's done. The victory has been won. Oh, so different now. It's different now since Jesus saved my soul. It's different now since by his blood I'm whole. Oh, Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. And it's different. Soul. It's different now since by his blood I'm whole. Oh, 
Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. And it's different. It's different now, isn't it? Yes. Since we've been made whole by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I am excited that our pastor's back. Are you glad? Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. I know that we, oh yes, yes. We've sincerely missed him and he's gone through one of those trials that we all have in life, but God has been with him. We're glad that he's here, and looking forward to him being behind the pulpit. I love this man. I love this man because he not only loves God, he loves his people. I mean, uh, I've been in private conversations, and he's always talking about being at this hospital, or he's saying, Ray, let's pray for this person. He has you on his heart, and he loves you, and wants to help you, because it's his desire to see you make it to the other side. Amen. And so we're glad to have him with us. And I wonder, do we have any visitors that is with us today? Visitors? Well, anyhow, we want to welcome everyone that is here, and we trust that you will be blessed. We sang that song when we first started off, that because he lives, uh -huh. yeah. I can face tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And if there was ever a time that we need power and we need victory and we need confidence and we need the anointing to face the morrows, it's now. Yeah. But I love that part where it says, all fear is God. Uh -huh. yeah. And sometimes we say that, but we say, well, there is a twinge or a little bit of fear. But I'm telling you that there is a place in Christ where all fear is God. And I thank him for that. If you have your Bibles, let's look at 1 Samuel And I'm going to start reading from the very first verse of the 30th chapter of 1 Samuel. If I would have a title or a subject, it, it would be, I'm getting weary. What now? Have you ever been there? Have you... Uh, I see that a lot of times. You've served God all of your life and you've been faithful and you love Him and you love God's people. But there can be a time in our life when we just start to get a little bit weary. And remember there's a scripture that says, Be not weary in well-doing, for you will reap if you faint not. And you say, I really haven't fainted, but I'm... I, 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 Got to be honest with you, Brother Valentine, don't tell anyone, but the enthusiasm I had to be in God's house isn't there like it once was. Sometimes I kind of sit home and watch a football game on Sunday night. I know I ought to be there, but I'm just, I'm just tired. It's just different. I don't know if it's getting older or what, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just starting to get weary, and I'm not the flaming on fire person for God like I once was. And, and what now? Let, let, th th this has happened to David and I think of this giant killing soldier training no backup warrior 
and I read about him here, and he's not even king yet, but he's been anointed king, and 13 years before he gets to the throne, and it's just been a battle. And he's starting to get weary, and he makes some bad decisions. Let's read this, 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. And I'd taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, neither great or small, but they carried them away and went on their way. Now they did not kill them because they carried them away as prisoners because they was going to use them for slaves. That's what they did. And David and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and his people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Not just a little. They wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken cap captive. And Noam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your presence that we feel. And I pray that as we minister from the word that you will anoint it and may it go forth and touch the hearts of people that need to hear this. For Master, we know that in you is our strength, that in you is our encouragement, in you is our victory, and you never let us down. And I pray that we will get instruction, that we will get wisdom, and we will do as David did when we have times of battle. We will encourage ourselves in the Lord, for in you there's no defeat. We ask this. May the Holy Spirit guide and have his way, and we thank you for it in a wonderful name. When I read this, sometimes I sit back and I think, this is, this is David. And I remember just a lad, and he's going out to face the giant Goliath, and, and Israel is dependent on him, and I can see him with his little slingshot going up, and I think, what, what, what a heart that this man has. And he goes out, and he slays Goliath. And, and I read on about him whenever he picked up men, just ragtag nobodies, people that, that owed debt, people that couldn't pay their taxes. I mean, they were nobodies. And he took them and whipped them into the one of the greatest elite armies of all time. What a magnificent leader he was. And I, 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 I can think of Saul whenever Saul was... Uh, tormented it and he would play music and God would anoint it and the evil spirit would, would go away. Oh, this talented man. And then I read all the songs and the praises to God. What a man, a man's man. One of the greatest men in the book. And I find him in this situation. Broken Weep until he can weep no more. And those men who one time would have gave their lives for David. You remember the story when David was thirsty in a battle and one of the soldiers risked his life to go get David some water and he brought it back. And David looked at it and said, that man could have died trying to get me water. I, 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 the rest of them is thirsty there in a battle. And David took the water and dumped it out. I mean, he, he's, he's some kind of a man. And now he's broken down and he can cry no more and those men that one time would have just gladly counted it an honor to give their lives in the battles that they had for David. They don't trust him anymore. And they're thinking about stoning him. Those men that 
would have given everything. Now says, let's just kill him. And I see how in the world did David ever get himself in this situation? In order to find out about it, we have to turn back just a little bit to the 27th chapter. Let's just turn a page back and let's read that. And it says, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There's nothing better for me than that I should speedily and in a hurry right now get out of here. Escape to the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me and seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So I shall escape out of his hand. And David arose and he passed over with 600 men that were with him to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath. He and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath and he sought no more again for him. David said unto Achish, If I have now found grace in thine eyes, then let them give me a place in some town or in the country that I may dwell there, for why should thy servant, David's calling himself a servant to the king of the Philistines, dwell in a royal city with thee? And Achish gave him Ziglag that day, wherefore Ziglag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah, unto this day. I had just mentioned that David had spent most of the years from the time that he was anointed by Samuel to be king until he actually ascended the throne. King of Saul was after him and there was other tribes that was after David and he spent most of that time just fighting. Fighting really for the cause of his God. And, and David had reached a place where he was weary and tired and fearful. And he allowed fear to creep in and David said in his heart, he, he said, someday I'm going to perish by the hand of Saul. I, I'm going to die. And, and, and he allowed fear to creep into his heart. Proverbs 29, 25 says the fear of man bringeth a snare. And that's why I was so excited when our song leader sang that song to start this very service off, that because he lives, all fear is gone. And you know, if the enemy wants to bring downfall to you, one of the first time things that he does is bring fear. Things that one time you could have annoyed, uh, ignored and took and taken to the Lord in prayer and gotten victory over it. Now suddenly that fear begins to rise and it begins to, 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 to get bigger until you no longer have the courage that you want to have. If you read 1 John 4, 18 to 20, it says that fear brings torment. Fear is, that's why the Bible says that, that the, the Lord doesn't give us the spirit of fear. The first time that we ever find fear in the entire Bible is after men sin. And God who would come down in the cool of the day to visit with Adam and Eve. He, after man sinned, they went and hid themselves. And God says, where are you, Adam? Where are you? And Adam says, uh, I, I hid because I was afraid. And that's the first time you hear fear. And the enemy wants to bring fear in your life. And, and even as young Christians, before we grow in the Lord, that's one victory we have to win of fear before we can testify. And, and it's something over your is, is you learn the Holy Spirit uses you and you get into using the gifts of the Holy Spirit or you get up to preach or, or, or you have to overcome that. And yet the Holy Spirit, when you seek Him, will over help you overcome that. Amen. You have heard me preach enough now to know that I have trouble with pronunciation. 
My mother was like that. It's been like that all of my life. And it's not that I don't know the words. I physically cannot say them. There has probably been almost every sermon, including this one, that I sat down my, with my wife and these names that I just pronounced. I says, honey, help me pronounce them. And she sits and we have before every sermon and we go through a deal trying to pronounce words. Even though it is written out, and she will tell me different ways to say that. I physically cannot pronounce them. It was that way in school. I also had a, a fear of people. And I was going to turn down my high school diploma. Because I had to get up before I graduated. And give a speech in front of a class. And I wouldn't do that. And I came home and said I'm not going to graduate mom. And the teacher says, well, just read a book, get a little card, write out there who the author was, uh, what it was about, and if you enjoyed it, and sit down and you'll graduate. And I said, I'm not going to do that. And my mom started crying. She said, I wanted one of my sons to graduate. My oldest brother, when he was 17, joined the Marines when, uh, when the war was going on. And she says, I wanted one. And she went to the school teacher, and the school teacher said, all right, if he will write a report of several thousand words, I will let him graduate. And I sat down and I wrote that so that I could get my diploma with the rest of the class. And isn't funny that God says, I'm going to take this person who can't speak, who won't get in front of anybody, who can't pronounce words, and I think I'll make him a preacher. See, don't ever count your, limit, your limitations. Because the Holy Spirit knows you, who you are. And if he has a plan for you, you can come through victoriously if you walk according to his word. And fear has crept in to David. I, I saw something, and I've got to mention it because my wife uh, said, look at this, and a night or two, maybe some of you saw it on Facebook. In this time when there's such a war on Christianity and, and prayer in school, we saw a football team in New Mexico. They had their uniforms on, and they're coming out for a game, and they're carrying a cross. And this cross, looking at it, had to be, I don't know, 10, 12 feet long. It was a big, big cross. And this team came out of the locker room and they're going down the sidelines carrying a cross. And I thought there is people who will boo them. There is people that hate that. that, that, that there is those God-hating people that I imagine was just boiling an angler. But they was going to march fear or not regardless of, uh, of the consequences from the political world. They was carrying the cross. And, Claudia and I watched as they carried the cross down the sideline and they came to a place where a hole was dug and they set up the cross and then took off their helmets and kneeled down on their knees. I'm going to tell you that you can overcome fear and God will give you the courage to be the Christian, the witness, the preaching, the singing, the testifying, a flaming person on fire for Almighty God. But first you must conquer fear. Amen. God said, David, you're going to be king. And if God said it, you're going to be king. David, you proclaimed and you wrote about how true God's word and he said you was going to be king. You can't die. There's no devil in hell that can kill you. There's no warrior on earth that can ambush you. You're going to be king because God said that you was going to be king. And for some reason, he had forgotten that. And yet, when God tells you, Christian, that you're more than an overcomer, that means you're more than an overcomer. When God tells you that he holds you in his hand, 
that there's nothing, there's no angels, there's no height, there's no depth, there's no principality, there's no devil in hell that can clutch you out. You can make it if you believe it. We used to sing that song. That if God said it, I'll believe it. For his word cannot lie. If it's written in the Bible, I'll believe it till I die. Though the mountain be removed and cast in the sea, his word will live forever throughout eternity. If he said it, I'll believe it. If it's written in his word, because he cannot lie. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then the next thing, David is full of fatigue. He's just tired of running. Now I want to point out something to you that David is living in this camp for 16 months and in that 16 months he doesn't write a psalm. And I can't find where he ever prayed. He's just oh he's an Israelite at heart. But he's just tired of running. And when you get tired Maybe there's some church services that you could have made it, but you didn't. And when we didn't have this disease, we, we could get together and put our arms around each other and pray around the altar and help our brother. But sometimes we left because the hour was getting late, but there was someone weeping at that altar that needed a person to put their arms around them and pray with them and we're not really we're just getting tired I mean we got to be honest we're not as active as we once were because we're tired we just get tired we get weary I want to look at Isaiah the 30 second chapter and when we get tired we need to go to the rock and it says behold a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a culvert from the tempest is rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land when we get weary, we can run to the rock. We used to sing that song, a rock in a weary land. Because when we go to the rock, there we find strength and uplifting encouragement. Oh, we need to run to the rock. We used to sing that song, rock of ages, it's cleft for me because in that rock, we found a hiding place and a resting place. So when we get weary, we need to go to the rock. This wasn't part of my sermon. This wasn't part of my sermon, but I can't read this chapter without reading the fourth and fifth verse. It says, The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge and the tongue of the stammer shall be ready to speak plainly <laughs> the fifth verse says I'm going to get in trouble oh well it says and the vile person shall no more be called liberal <laughs> no that, that's what it says it says the vile I better leave that one alone the vile, the vile person shall no but we need to go to the rock. And I'm tired, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mound up of wings, oh yeah, as eagles. They shall run and what? And not what? A little louder and they'll not what? Weary. 
there's a place where if you're getting weary spiritually go to the rock he'll mount you up as the wings of an eagle but David doesn't do this come on David you're, you're my hero man in Sunday school I But David's not praying. He's not writing songs. He's not singing. He's fearful and he's weary. And he says, I'm just going to go to Gath. You know what Gath is. That, that was where the giant, the one that he killed, that's where he lived. That was his hometown. Philistines. And he says, I'm just going to go there, and when Saul finds out that I went there, then he's going to quit chasing me. So David goes to Gath. And the king brags on him. And the, the seventh verse says, The time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. For 16 months he's down there. David, you're my hero, but when you compromise, it doesn't just affect you. It affects others. You can say, I'm doing it my way. But it'll affect the lives of others. For David's going to Gath, and the Bible says that those trusty soldiers, 600 of them, and their wives and family go with him. And now there's what? Probably a couple thousand people. A couple thousand of God's people now that is going to live with the enemy, the Philistines. David, you made a decision. You just made a decision. That you just can't take it anymore. And you're going to Gath. But there's a couple thousand that's going with you. See, that's the danger, Christian. If you don't seek God and get victory and you make bad decisions, there's consequences. Your children is watching. Your friends is watching. David has lost respect. And he's carrying hundreds, if not thousands, into the enemy's camp. And there he goes. And now David is saying, What can I do? And the king says, Well, now you're one of us. You're not just going to sit around. The Bible says, doesn't say, says you're either for me or against me. And the king says, you're going to fight for us. David is an Israelite at heart and he doesn't want to fight the people of Israel. And so, as the king would send him out. The eighth verse says that David and his men went up to invade the Gershonites, Gershonites and the Amalekites in the eighth verse. And then the king says, David, how'd you do? Where, where, where was you fighting at today? Now David's lying. He said, I the 10th verse, he says, I, I, I've gone down against the south of Judah, making it sound like David is fighting Judah. He didn't say he was fighting Judah. He says, I'm going down to the south of Judah. And, and he says, and I'm fighting the Jer uh, Jeremalites and the Canaanites. Now, it's not, that, that's a lie. That's not who he's fighting. I just read to you who he's fighting. And the Bible says that David 
neither saved man or woman alive to bring tidings to Gath. David says, I'm going to these cities. And now these, these, these people who David are fighting were, were not enemies of Gath. They were of Israel. But they was just kind of neutral in a way, kind of like in World War II, Russia and the United States. We kind of partnered, but we, we wasn't friends. And this is what David is doing. He's going down and fighting the enemies of Israel. But these people were not the enemies of the Philistines. And David says that he was. These people here are the enemies of the Philistines. And David is fighting them. And he's told his soldiers, we got to kill every last person. Because if one person escapes and comes and tells the king who we've really been fighting, then the, they, so there's David. Lion, killing people that wasn't the enemy of Gath, killing them all so no one could tell. And then the time comes and the Philistines, Saul is dead, and the Philistines now says, now, with Saul gone, we can take Israel. We'll be able to go against Israel. And David is in the valley of decision. Am I going to fight against my people? God anointed me to be king. Am I going to fight against them? And the king appoints David's soldiers not to fight, but to be his bodyguard. The Bible says he, he was the rear of the soldier. He, 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 was, he was the bodyguard for the king. He stood behind the soldiers to have his back. Oh, David. Oh, David. This anointed war has the enemy's back. But something happens. As they're getting ready to go to war, some of the captains in the Philistine army says, you know, there's something about David we don't trust. Do you know that he's the one they used to sing about Saul killing his thousands, but David, ten, he's, he's the one that killed our hero? And I know he's a traitor because the, the king said, since David fell to me, which means traitor, so, so I know, it, but, but ever since he betrayed Israel and came to me, he's been honorable. We can trust him. No, we can't. If we're going to fight, I don't trust David. And so the king calls David over and says, Boy, David, I trust you with my life. You're, you, you're honorable. But some of the soldiers don't like you and you're going to have to leave. And David is upset. He says, Well, what have I done? I've been loyal to you. Oh, David. David, 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 my heart is breaking right now because you're my hero. You're murdering, you're lying, you're deceiving, you have the enemy's back. David, you're my David. Now David is a man without a country. And he heads to Ziglag, the city that the Philistines had gave him to live in. And he had been fighting the Amalekites, and while David was in this other skirmish, the Amalekites, who he had fought, came down to Ziglag, where their family was at, and burnt the city, and took away all of the children and their wives as captives. You talk about being at the bottom. 
And David and his men see their families gone and they cry until they can cry no more. Can you get this picture? You top over a hill and there's David, our hero, and he can't even cry anymore. Listen, you hear the rumblings? It's David's men that would have died for him, said, we've lost confidence. We're going to kill him. David, anointed, giant killer, songwriter, witness from for God. You've lost your reputation. You've been killing. You've been lying. You're a deserter. You're not believing when God said that you're going to be. Oh, David. But you know what my hero does? For the first time in 16 months, he's going to pray. It says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. That don't mean he went to the Lord and told the Lord how good he was. To get encouragement, he had to fall on his knees and begin to confess. I, 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 I'm not the leader that you called me to be. I'm not the anointed one. That anointing that was so precious, I, I failed. And not only is my family and my wives gone, but these soldiers, they're little kids, they're, they're all gone. Forgive me. And then David said this. Shall I pursue? And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? Oh, I love God's answer. He said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And I can see David as he takes the 600 men and he begins to pursue. 200 of them was spent. They were weary. They wasn't cowards. They just couldn't go any further. Do you remember when Gideon was going to go to war and he had 32,000 and he says, if anybody is scared, then go back to your home. And 22,000 of them left. 22,000 out of the 32,000. Says, we're scared. And they went home. But not these men. David, you know we would go. We... We just can't, we just can't go anymore. And David and his soldiers pursued. And, and you know what they did? They found them as they went over a hill. Those, those people were dancing. We just got all the stuff from David, that great mighty David. When you fall, the devil dances. But I'm telling you that when you pray and God restore you, the devil flees. And David's men overtook them and slaughtered them outside of a few that escaped on camels. And the Bible says David recovered all. And not only that, he took sheep and he had ten times as much stuff as after that victory than he ever had before. Ray, you're closing your sermon, but what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you've got fear, 
If you've got weary along the road, if you thought maybe that, he, that, that, that the anointing never doesn't rest on you once more, that maybe God doesn't have a plan for you, I'm telling you that God has got a plan for your life, that he wants to use you, that he wants to bless you, that he wants to set you on fire for his cause. And the Bible told David, you can recover all, and it's time for us to go back to the enemy's camp and take everything that he stole from us and get it back. I mean, get back our peace, get back our joy, get back our power, get back our happiness, get back our testimony, get back our song, get back our sermons. I mean, it's time for us to begin to walk down victory lane because we can get it all back. Everything and more be more powerful than it ever has because Jesus has a plan. For everyone that is here. And that plan is victory. Yes. So if you've been discouraged. You haven't sunk as low as David. And I'm telling you there's victory. There's forgiveness. There's strength. Fear can be gone. And you can be what Jesus See, I believe with all my heart, as much as I believe anything, that God has a plan. The Bible says that for every person. See, not a plan for the preacher. For the, every one of you, you can point at yourself and say, God has a plan for me. He has a plan for each one of us. And the joy and the peace and the victory and the happiness comes when you fulfill that plan. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this service. We thank you for forgiveness. Oh, Master, sometimes we make foolish mistakes. Sometimes we just get tired. And sometimes fear creeps into our lives and we catch ourselves setting back. Oh, we're, we're still Christians at heart, but Master, we're, we're, we're really not where you want us to be. But we're coming home right now. We're asking you to forgive us of anything that is displeasing in thy sight. Forgive us our shortcomings. And Master, restore us. Because I hear your voice saying in my heart, pursue and recover all. Get it all back. Everything the enemy's taken, we're going to take it back. Everything he stole from us, we're going to get it back. We're going to get our testimony back. We're going to get our shout back. We're going to get our smile back. Hallelujah! We're getting it back right now. We're getting it back. Because you told us to get it back. We're taking it back in the name of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to walk in victory like we've never walked in before. Because you are victory. And we're going to sing victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. We're getting it all back right now. And we thank you for it. In thy lovely name. Amen. God bless you. Leonard, it's so good to see you. I could just about jump up and down and shout. You feeling better? God bless you. Looking forward to the time when we can have people around the altar and laying hands and but, yeah. Amen. But but everyone, we're glad that you're here. If there's visitors, we welcome you. Be back. And that's the pastor. And he'll find somebody who really loves you and wants to help you. God bless you. Be friendly. Be back tonight at six o'clock.